It's my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Lu Chang Li. Uh, Dr. Li was until a, about a month ago the Minister of, of uh, the National Science Council of Taiwan, where he, the, the position that he held for four years. Um, as you all know, Taiwan is a country that has, is a te technological powerhouse, and Dr. Li has been a very important contributor to making that happen over the last three decades. Before being the minister, he was the president of the National Central University, and prior to that, the president of the National Applied Research Lab. Dr. Li received his bachelor's degree in physics from National Taiwan University, and MS and PhD degrees in physics from, from Caltech. California Institute of Technology. Um, he worked at NASA, he worked at University of Maryland, University of Alaska, and then back in Taiwan at uh, the National Chang Cheng Kung University, where he eventually was the dean of the College of Science. He has received many international awards. The list is a bit too long for me to read, but let me read a few anyway. The Torre Science Foundation Fellow, the Terry Moore Award in Space Physics, uh, the Ful Fulbright Scholar, the Emil Usubili Distinguished Research Award um, from the Advancement of Outstanding uh, Scholarship, the Ministry of Education, and he's, he's a fellow of uh, several ac academies and so on. Uh, the list is a bit too long. Um, in addition to being a, a great policy leader, he's also an eminent scientist with over 200 uh, research, uh, research papers and three academic monographs. He has done a lot of work in very um, important space phenomena and uh, physics, including the discovery of gigantic jets in up Earth's upper atmosphere and many other important, very, very important scientific contributions. Uh, with that, I present the microphone to Dr. Lee. Thank you, uh, Dean Kuma, for the nice introduction. Uh, uh, it's really an honor for me to attend this interesting and important workshop on engineering education and to give this public lecture. So here I want to thank uh, President Horton, uh, Provost Piano, and uh, Professor Pero Surison. Okay, uh, in this talk, I will show you, share with you, with you a few examples uh, in uniting the science and technology and humanities in Taiwan. Next. Uh, of course, we know the science and technology has made a great contribution to the society in the past. This including the improved productivity, raise material living standards, and enhance efficiency, etc. However, next one, okay, uh, we have to face, like uh, the <coughs> last year, the earthquake and tsunami in Japan, we have to face global warming. The tsunami, earthquake and tsunami damage, the earthquake and tsunami of course, it was caused by the nature. However, the nuclear plant, uh, the nuclear plants are being made. Next one, please. <coughs> and we also face water shortage, natural resources shortage. Next one. According to the United Nations International Strategy for Disaster Reduction, in 2010, uh, 295,000 people died in 373 major disasters. Economic loss is uh, 100, 109 US billion US dollars. Last year, 29,000, more than 29,000 people died in <coughs> over 300 major disasters. Economic loss amount to 366 billion US dollars. Next one. <coughs> uh, so what's humanities? Okay. Humanism put equal emphasis on material and spiritual aspect of human life. The humanistic thought 
refer to Confucianism, <coughs> which is a human-centered philosophy, human communion with nature, uh, is the base of Taoist thoughts, okay, which emphasize harmony between mankind and nature. Of course, Lao Tzu also emphasized human beings shall follow the law of nature. Next one. Before go ahead, I will just provide some base data uh, in Ta for Taiwan. We have only 36,000 square kilometers. We have, which house 23 million people, okay? In <coughs> last, last year, the GDP per capita is about $20,000 only. However, the PPP, I think Taiwan has uh, over 40,000. Uh, the gross rate last year is about 4%. Uh, but the gross rate in 2010 is 12.8%, okay? Uh, our research budget, you know, is about 2.9% of GDP. Uh, our global competitiveness uh, last year, 2011, according to IMD, we rank number six in the world. According to World Economic Forum, we rank 13 in the world. The picture shows Taiwan, the map of Taiwan, the Kaohsiung city in the south, uh, the Taipei 101 building uh, in, in Taipei, and the famous Salmon Lake. Next one. The, <coughs> the R&D expenditure okay, uh, has been increasing. Uh, yearly, and 2009, it's about, as I mentioned earlier, it's about 2.94% of GDP. And if you use current rate, exchange rate, it's about 12.5 uh, billion US dollar. <coughs> and out of this, 72% come from private sector, 28% from the government. Next figure, please. Uh, the horizontal axis show the uh, research money as a percentage of GDP. The vertical axis is a, uh, <coughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> next one. Okay, the, horizon, uh, the horizontal axis show the percentage of GDP, GDP uh, for research money. The vertical one show the number of researchers per 1,000 uh, employments. Okay, the rest part is Taiwan. We have about 2.94% uh, of GDP and 11.9 per 1,000. It's 11.9 researcher per 1,000 employment. Okay, only next to Finland. But about the GDP percentage, we are behind Korea, Switzerland, Japan, Sweden. And I have been pushing uh, for this percentage to reach uh, 4% in the year 2016. Next one, please. Uh, the next one shows the SCI ranking of publications from Taiwan. And we rank uh, the paper num number of paper, we rank 16. Okay, the citation, we drank 19. So there's still a difference, a lack in, the, in terms of quality. is still behind the quantity. Actually, the year of 2011, the number of SCI papers is decreasing by about 1,000 papers. But the citations keep increasing because in the past few years, we have emphasize the quality over quantity of research papers. Next one. This is the EI we rank number nine. Social science, so-called so SSCI, we rank number 15 uh, in the world. Next one, please. Uh, the, 
World Competitiveness Ranking, as I mentioned earlier, by the IMD of Switzerland, uh, we rank number six in the area of technology, infrastructure, and science structure. We rank number six and number seven. Next one, please. Uh, under the National Science Council, we also supervise the science parks development. The science park, as you can see, uh, we have 13 main park in near total and satellite park. We have 13 of them. And it's uh, employed over uh, 230,000 okay, people. And the revenue, <coughs> actually, last year is about 64 billion uh, US dollar. But the year 2010, it's, uh, it's about 72 billion. You know, so last year we have a quite a decrease of about 10%. Next, okay, uh, we have uh, many, you know, uh, top rank made in Taiwan products. These products, excluding the product made overseas, say in mainland China or in Vietnam and other country, this is only made in Taiwan. Okay, the, in the area of foundry. Okay, we rank number one. In the IC design, we rank number two. We have about 21% of world market in IC design. USA has about 50%. So the rest of the world has about 29% uh, of the IC design. And it, <coughs> the right hand side is your, uh, in 2010, uh, US granted patents. We have over 8,000 patents, okay, ranking number five, okay, after USA, Japan, Germany, South Korea, and then we rank number five. But if the number of the patent per one million people, you know, we rank number one, okay. <laughs> okay, next one, please. So, <coughs> uh, in the past years, we try to unite it or apply the science technology to humanities and other areas in Taiwan. Uh, I will introduce a few cases, including the so-called pavilion of dreams, the smart town, the digital archives, and digital learning, and disaster prevention and mitigations. Okay? Uh, before going on, I want to mention that we, t we try to take advantage of the strengths of ICT in Taiwan and apply ICT technology, knowledge, to Medicare, to the promotion of tourism, to the smart living, smart car, digital archive, digital learning, and for the, also for the disaster mitigation. Number two, the National Science Council. In the past few years, we also emphasize issue-driven research. Okay, for example, the most challenging one is the short-term earthquake prediction. And of course, that we are involved physics, chemistry, biology, ICT technology, etc., and need, you know, uh, innovation in all area, okay, uh, to solve this uh, very important and tough <laughs> issue, okay. Uh, now, let me go to case one, the pavilion, next one, the pavilion of dreams. In this pavilion, when we will be able to experience a virtual journey, 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 Composed of dreams integrate with technology and art. Next one, please. Uh, in 2011, 2010, actually, it's extend to 2011. Taipei uh, held the 2010 International Flora Exposition, and many, in addition to the flower outdoor, okay, 
Uh, we also set up many pavilions for exhibition. One of them is called Pavilion of Dreams, and it turned out to be the most popular one, you know, packed every day, and you had to wait <laughs> uh, for a long time. And actually, through these pavilions, okay, they attract many visitors, and then <coughs> the uh, it's turned out to be the most uh, successful flora exposition uh, in uh, you know, this, this one. And I think the pavilion of uh, Dream make a great contribution. Next one. <coughs> the pre pre is uh, the grain hall, okay? And in the grain hall, through the forest tunnel inside a spectacular grain hall, you will see a large mechanical flower dancing along with music emitting from paper leaf speakers. And as it moves, enchanting changes throughout the day are revealed magically. The color change at different times of the day, it changes quite a bit at different times of the day. And actually, in this grain hall, two technologies are involved. The first, first one is uh, the mechanical flower, as shown here. Okay, the flower has 120 set of suspended mechanical petals. Okay, it is the collab collaborative result, okay, between the renowned, renowned Installation artist Mr. Oen Fu Yu, an engineer from Itri. Itri stands for Industrial Technology Research Institute in Taiwan. Okay. Uh, the other one is that Itri also invent the paper speakers. Okay. So it's in fact they call flex speakers. Flex speakers. Okay. The sound of the earth or the music. It's comprised of 150 leaf shape flex speakers scattered among 34,000 paper leaves in the grain hall. Okay. Next one, please. The gator one, the theme is diversity. In Taiwan, the density of biodiversity is one of the highest in the world. The design concept for Gator One illustrates the diverse natural ecology of Taiwan, events, visual and audio interactive, interactive multimedia technology, bring audience into a virtual reality, reality, mirroring the natural world. Actually. It's the, the 65 inch multi view naked eye stereoscopic display system, also invented invent by E3, uh, <coughs> are used. 3D effect is achieved without a 3D glasses. Okay. And exotic and royal plant species become vividly alive together with six chapter of poetry. So it's a really a great combination of ecology, technology, and humanities. Next one, please. Gallery two, uh, the theme is collaboration. In the transformation, transformation area, each person will be assigned to an insect based on his or her personal traits. The, this gallery is designed like a pedal lab, <coughs> labyrinth, and through the perspective of insect, each person will be transformed into an insect meandering inside a flower. Actually, pollen-like laser beams were projected to give each visitor an experience of an insect covered in pollen grains. Okay, 
So the collaboration between flowers and insects make pollination possible. Okay, it's quite an experience <laughs> if you visit the place. The gallery three, the theme is harmony. Okay, the green air, or actually the air in the forest, is based on the concept of harmony between human and nature. Spec spectators can move freely within this 360 degree, comprised of innovative spatial lighting and sound installation. Okay, the non-contact, non-contact, Otherwise, then, physiological sensing technology is used in this gallery. Okay, Spec uh, visitors' uh, physiological data, such as heartbeat and breathing rate, are gathered and processed, which then transform and modify the visual, visual imageries nearby. So it's a interactive uh, locally. Next one, please. Get ready for is love and dream. At the end of the journey, there is a sea of floral boat dancing harmoniously with the music. These mechanic, mechanical flowers can perform a wave-like dance with changes in color and form. Okay, so you maybe you want to see <laughs> the pavilion. Okay, now let's go to case two, next one. It's about a smart town. Okay, of course, smart living technology has been developed in many countries. Okay, here I just mentioned two of the several projects carried out in Taiwan on this topic. Next one, please. Okay. Uh, Taiwan, this is a different lab. It's so the core is called Taipei Healthy City. Okay. Provide a service of Taipei telecare. Uh, Taiwan has one of the best health care system. Okay. And inside this healthy city, okay, uh, the the one at the center called contact center play a very important role. Okay? The personal health informatics is related to individual citizens. Okay? They will collect the more vital signs, motion detection system, and others. Okay? The data will be related to the contact center, and the contact center will decide the seriousness of the condition, okay? Uh, they may send them through emergency service uh, to the regional medical center, okay? They may just ask frontier worker, social worker, okay? Uh, and have a uh, home care, okay? And they may want to, yeah, uh, send them for screening, for checkup, for immunization, okay, uh, and for also for remote cons consultation. So this is the uh, healthcare system. Uh, our scientists, in collaboration with Taipei City, they want to develop this system. Next one is that uh, we in introduce the cloud concept to promote uh, the smart life. Okay, in Taiwan, we have a lot of 7-Eleven, the so-called grocery or convenience store, open 24 hours, the year round, okay? And then the government or the business, they may set up the like, medical crowd, sightseeing crowd, government crowd, okay, system crowd, computing crowd, okay? Now, the 7-Eleven, we provide a contact point assessment. Uh, they can, through this store, access to the government or business crowd. Okay? Uh, <coughs> so this is very unique for Taiwan uh, to take care, 
to take advantage of the, you know, every other street, we have the 7-Eleven, okay? And we have the, a good ICT technology. So this is uh, already the 7-Eleven provide, uh, for example, we can buy the train ticket, the council ticket at 7-Eleven. You can pay your beers, phone beer, credit card beer, okay, at the 7-Eleven. So this is a very unique case for Taiwan and maybe a good example for the world. Okay, next one. I will talk about the digital archives and digital learning, e-learning. Okay, this is, a, we start a national research program on these topics, okay, about 10 years ago. Okay, and I will <coughs> show example for the treasure archive archives of the treasure uh, inside the National Palace Museum. And also, we attempt to build digital school for the 21st century. Next one. Okay. This Taiwan Digital Archive and e-learning program. Okay. Uh, the oh, I mean, last one, yeah. The objectives is to showcase cultural, social, and biological diversities of Taiwan. Then to promote the application of technology and digital content in culture, academic, social, economic, and educational development. Number three is to establish digital archive and e-learning industry. Number four, to improve the use of e-learning in formal education and lifelong learning. Number five, to establish Taiwan as a global e-learning center of Chinese language. Number six, to promote international cooperation network of Chinese cultural heritage and e-learning. Next one, please. The academic significance, as you can see, we have established a Taiwan e-learning and uh, digital archiving program, Union Catalog, okay? This catalog now uh, provides a convenience retrieval interface which connects more than 600 websites, okay? The Teladec Union Catalog also contains more than 4.46 million metadata and more than 8 million pieces of median objects. Of course, this can be used for research, not only for the researcher in Taiwan, but all the way, because you are able to uh, have access to the catalog. Next one, please. Uh, in this program, we also promote technology advancement uh, in the area of image enhancement and video in painting technology. Next one. <coughs> uh, as I mentioned earlier, we also pro promote industrial development for business. Okay? And a good example is that the Keystar company collaborate with the National Museum of Marine Biology and Aquarium, the, <coughs> the National Museum also get involved with, participate in the digital archiving project, okay? And they come up with a so-called Keystar color LED light, okay? And this light fixture products has proved to be uh, one of the best sellers in fine home decoration markets in Northern America and Europe. Next one, please. Okay, the Palace Museum, the National Palace Museum, has, uh, has digitally archived most of their treasures, including <coughs> calligraphies, paintings, and art <coughs> artifacts. Next one, please. And there, inside, if you have uh, visited the Palace Museum, you will see a lot of treasures, beautiful and 
For example, here we also have the so-called green, green and white J cabbage, okay? And there's a small insect on top of that, okay? <laughs> and really, uh, it's a, really a fine <coughs> piece of art. Okay, next one. Uh, we also develop 3D virtual artwork display system for the important uh, artworks. As you can see here, uh, the, <coughs> the cabbage and others. Okay, next one. And we also develop, we also have a value-added application made of the museum's digital archives. I just I want to say, <coughs> emphasize uh, second from the top of the right-hand side, okay? Uh, we have developed many online games based on the story of the <coughs> artworks and the, at the bottom, you know, left-hand, right-hand side, okay? We have developed interactive digital tabletops, okay? And of course, this can be used uh, for restaurant, restaurant menus, okay? And many other applications, okay, from the Palace Museum, digital archives, okay? Next one. Now, I'll talk a little bit about, we are working toward building digital school for the 21st century, okay? And we have pioneering research of digital learning in the past 10 years. And now we plan for the digital school building. Next one, please. As you can see here, the classroom uh, in the K-12 uh, of the old day and the now day didn't, <laughs> do, not change, <laughs> do not change much, all right? <laughs> okay, it's cool still look like a factory. You know, we have the mass production. And I think we have a very rigorous discussion about engineering, teaching in college, you know, uh, today. It's very interesting. I learned quite a lot, okay. Next, uh, you know, it's about 10 years ago, our research group developed the world's first dedicated system for network learning. At that time, there's no iPhone, <laughs> no iPad, no HTC system, okay? But they are using the, you know, develop the peer <coughs> tutoring. The student can tutor each other, okay? Of course, you need tutors, tutor. Maybe the teacher can provide that. So it's a, become a collaborative learning and competitiveness uh, learning game. Okay, next one. In the year of 2000, 12 years ago, we developed the so-called edu education, edu city. It's the largest online learning society early in this century. Okay, the edu city, <coughs> uh, like uh, Taiwan, okay, then we have edu town, like it's cool. As you visit, like classes. So it's a, like, you know, the network world has a one to one similarity with the real cities, okay? And there are two important components in this education. One is that it's a school or, or teaching class for all. You know, in one instant, a certain year's student give class, lecture, you know, teach uh, to students. And it turned, we didn't know it's a 13 years, you know, kids, you know, give the class. We thought it's a the teacher. It turned out just, you know, the class was, gi was given by a 13 years uh, student. And the other one is that through the system, the teachers can share, it become a form of society, they can share their teaching skill, you know, and also share their teaching contents, okay? Now, next one, please. 
the, I just want to quote, you know, the National Educational Technology Plan 2010 of President Obama's administration. Okay. Uh, it says, the concept of a learning society is not a vision for the future. Examples already exist starting in 2000. A research team in Taiwan developed a network of websites called EduCity that breaks down the walls of the school to involve broader communities in supporting learning. Okay? And as the leader, the innovator, Professor Chen described it, Educate City comprises a hierarchy of communi communities that have reached more than 1.5 million students in over 1,700 schools. Next one, please. 2002, the pioneer mobile learning outdoors, as I just mentioned. Uh, <coughs> As I just mentioned, actually, at that time, they are using the PDA for local hub, you know, for this purpose. Next one, please. They also develop educational robots as learners companions, as kids companions, okay? Uh, in Taiwan, we have very low birth rate, you know, most family is a one-child family like in many in China, <laughs> okay. So the learning ro ro educational robot, I think it uh, can play very important for kids learning and education. Okay, now next one. I will mention about, we are pr <coughs> planning for the future, okay. Nurturing the Dragon Project, Peilong Jihua, huh? is to build Digital school for the 21st century. Next, okay, the before on the left hand side is teacher teaching, student listening. You know, it's a teacher -cent centered education. Now we want to move to the right, okay, at the center, two features, features. One is a student directed learning, you know. <clears throat> this learning process, teacher play the role as a one-to-one -one mentors, okay? And the student can self, set their self pace, yeah, self goal setting, okay? And this will let the student has a lot of motiva motiva motivation and <clears throat> they show more interest, okay? The other one is a collaborative problem solving. The teacher, we are active group, groups coach, okay? And actually, this kind of process has been trying, okay, in, in a few elementary schools with very success. For example, their math, like second grade math, actually they become equivalent to third grade already and their reading capability is much better than, <laughs> than the regular education. Okay, so we want to expand this experience to the whole Taiwan, to the whole nation. Next one, please. Okay, uh, of course we have to develop this educational crowd. Okay, we have the portfolio crowd for students. We have the contact crowd we have the teacher professional development crowd. We have the assessment crowd, assessment the progress of student. Learning community crowd, okay? And it's turned out to be a seamless learning process. Learning continuously, anywhere, anytime, with anyone, by any devices. So the learning can be in classroom, campus, home, outdoors. Next one, please. Okay, now the design is that we have the a university, like National Central University, okay? And then we have like an elementary school or junior high school, we call Dragon School. 
we work together, then we can expand this one to other, the so-called dragon schools, and form a dragon circle, and they can share their experience together. Of course, we need government support. We need the industry, NGO, might be interested in this project. And we have also planned to have three levels of dragon school. The lowest one is that they may have only one demonstration class or a few more. The second level, the whole grade must be, you know, you know uh, get involved. Uh, the top level is three whole grades or more uh, get involved. Okay, next one. So the overall goal is to build digital school for the 21st century. The sub goals, you know, can, is to nurture the 21st century skills, shifting learning and teaching paradigm, supporting the disadvantaged students. Okay. Okay. Now coming to the number four, the last one example is disaster prevention and mitigation. Actually, we start the national program, research program on disaster prevention and mitigation quite a long time ago. Okay? And here I will just show you a two uh, example. Number one is uh, related to the satellite program. I find out there are many. Uh, huh? Oh, okay. Okay, that's okay. Yeah, this is good. <laughs> okay, foremost program, satellite program. And of course, uh, the other one is related to like earthquake precursor studies. Next one. Taiwan has carried out three, successfully three satellite programs. Okay, number one, foremost set one, foremost set two, foremost set three. Next one, please. Okay, the foremost set two, provide imagery to support assessment of major natural disasters. Okay, it was launched in the year of 2004, and at that time, a few, a few months later, South Asia tsunami took place. And our satellite also provide data for Hurricane Katrina, Sichuan earthquake, <coughs> and last year, for the Northern Japan earthquake tsunami. Okay, next one. The satellite actually also, uh, <coughs> they only become the, on the side, okay, other than the more sensing data, the satellite also carry a scientific payload, okay, to study the so-called transient luminous events. Okay, as you can see from this figure, from the cloud, you have the cloud to ground light, lightning. But in addition, some lightning also occur above the cloud top. You know, we have the so-called blue jet, gigantic jet, surprise airbus. Okay, the gigantic jet uh, is uh, discovered by the Taiwan research team. Uh, next one. Okay, next one. Now, the Formosa 3, actually, not, we, not only just one satellite, we send a constellation of six satellites. Each satellite receives the radio signal from another constellation called you know, GPS constellation, which has 24 to 28 satellites. And when the radio wave passes through, cuts through layer of atmosphere, okay, we know the bending angle we are able to get the index refraction as a function of height with high resolution. The index of height gives us the density of the air, of our air. Then from there, we are able to calculate the pressure, pressure profile of the atmosphere. If we divide pressure by density, we get temperature. So this satellite constellation provides each day over 2,000 vertical profile of atmospheric data, temperature, temper density, pressure, with high resolution. Okay, the data has been used. We have an open data policy, and over 1,700 research institutes or individuals 
from 57 countries. Okay, request for the use of our data. Next one, please. The, in particular, the ECMWF, the Weather Forecasting Center of European Union, in a rank our data set as the fifth place in all atmospheric observation. Okay, and it has been contributed to the weather forecasting very, very much. So next one, please. So we plan to have the uh, follow of this one we call Formosa 7, or the mission dive is called Cosmic 2. And actually, we originally, we plan to send only six satellites. But the NOAA of USA, okay, NOAA Air Force, NASA, want to join us, say, how about, you know, 12 satellites, okay? And so, and each satellite not only receive the GPS signal, but also plan to receive the Galileo uh, GLONASS, maybe in the future, receive the Beidou radio signal from mainland China. So the minima is 8,000 atmospheric sounding or vertical profile per day for weather forecasting and space weather monitoring. Okay, that's our, our contribution to the world. Now at the end, I will briefly mention the earthquake precursors. And this may be important for the short-term earthquake prediction. Okay, actually, as the Minister of National Science Council, uh, in the past four years, I also work on research on this problem. Okay. And recently, I come up with a theoretical model, you know, first this theory model, theoretical model for the coupling of stress. Next one, please. I'm sorry. The, a model for the stress rock, okay, the coupling for the stress rock Earth surface charge, atmosphere electricity, and ionosphere dynamic. Okay, and this was published. And people in this area get excited because in the past, next one, please. In the past, anytime you have an earthquake, they go, scientists go back to dig the GPS ionosphere density data and find out, you know, a few days before the earthquake. The, the electron density, ionosphere density, decrease or increase, okay? Next one, please. This is like, uh, you also decrease uh, south of the Wenchuan earthquake, okay? A few days before. This is minus six days, okay? But next one, please. But so far, no, before our theory, there's no theory. So people just, uh, <laughs> wait for the earthquake to occur and then dig in the data and then say they find some good correlation, okay? So now we provide a theory, uh, you, you know the stress uh, rock can lead to the flow of hole, <coughs> past the hole, electric holes, provide current. Next one, please. As you can show here, you put the stress door and the current comes out, you know, this is from that. Uh, <coughs> experiment. Next one. So you can see stress rock can have current flowing upward to the Earth's surface to, to have the surface charge, to generate electric field, to generate the current flowing upward. In addition, the air, like oxygen, can be ionized. Okay, next one. So we have the calculated current system in the atmosphere and this flow into the ionosphere and lead to the plasma, you know, the move, okay, change the density. Okay, next one. So like this one, sure, this is from the three-dimensional simulation. The ionosphere density indeed change. Next one. And uh, we are, the percentage of change is related to the rock current density. For example, in order to change 20%, we need about three microampere per meter square, okay? And the surface charge, surface electric field also can be measured. So we not only can <coughs> measure the ionosphere density 
actually we can set up a detection system over the you know the, the important fault region and this may give you a information for the occurrence of uh, earthquake okay next one uh, we also find out the night time they can ionosphere the earthquake stress rock can <coughs> can induce plasma bubble in the ionosphere and actually some scientists in Taiwan and Japan, they find out the last year's Japanese, northern Japanese earthquake tsunami also produced the, uh, the bubble, okay? And <laughs> they, they told me, they, they observed that. Next one. So the study, uh, if we work hard on the earthquake precursor, and it may be possible uh, to make short-term earthquake prediction in the future. Next one. So in summary of my talk, we try to attempt to unite the science, technology, and humanities in Taiwan, okay, through the pavilion of dream, small town, digital archive, in, uh, ar archive. and we plan for the 21st century's digital school and we also work on the disaster prevention and mitigation. Thank you very much for your patience. From um, the ion density data, how much uh, advance notice does one have? How much? Advance notice. Oh, it's a... Uh, from the ionosphere observation, usually like a, a few days within one week or so, a one week. they may occur. I see. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if you rely only on that one, it may not be enough. So in Taiwan, we are set up a, you know, a group for earthquake precursor, not only ionosphere density, yeah. but also the uh, change of underground uh, water level, yes. the change of chemical component, yes. you know, and others, okay? So the ground is instrumented well somehow uh, with uh, accelerometers and things Yeah, like here that. I suggest a network to measure the electric field or the charge density or the current density from upward from the ground may be important for this purpose. Okay. Very interesting and these are quite exciting. I'm uh, interested, uh, what are your thoughts or what are Taiwan's thoughts on how the commercialization of these ideas would take place? These seem to often be started with uh, government support, but how are you intersecting industry in terms of taking them to the marketplace? Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, you know, Taiwan's mar market is small, okay? And actually, our government's policy doesn't, you know, favor you know, the industry. So all the, you know, as a minister, I visit the company in the science park very often. You know, if I never have time, I talk to them, okay. They work very hard for research because they have to survive in a competitive international stage, you know, international market. There's no other way for them to survive. They have to <laughs> very, work very hard, yeah. but. On the other hand, the National Science Council also tried to help. For example, in the area of the so-called uh, DSSC, or, you know, chemical, uh, ke organic, disensitized uh, solar cell, uh, we have very good research teams, and we now try to combine them together, set up a uh, detection instrument measurement in a lab, okay? So we are coherently apply the pattern. So if this become a, uh, a industry, you know, we will have our pattern and to be very competitive. So this rely, you know, is a combination of basic research and industry. And before our company just work for themselves, but this is really top invention, top research, you know, the government have to help the research 
the National Science Council had to help. Okay. As um, Taiwan has entered the international arena in the publications and so on, you made a statement at some point you are trying to assure quality of publications. Yeah. Um, how does one do that? I mean, how do you assure that the quality oh, okay. is superior somehow? Okay, yeah. For example, when the Ministry of Education evaluates a university or a research center, okay, we, I, I suggest they provide only five papers or five patents. They don't provide more than five, okay? Because uh, that's, uh, if that's a five paper, the five, you know, that part is uh, the quality, really. And we also, like they apply for proposal, uh, you know, research money, we also ask them to list five papers, important papers. Okay, so we try to downgrade the importance of the number. Okay, and that may help. And uh, you have uh, this emphasis of the positive side of the uh, science and the technology development. Yeah. But there may also some, I mean, negative side yeah. of those technology development also. Yeah. I mean, since we have this conference on engineering education, can you give some recommendations, I mean, so that we can avoid, I mean, the, uh, the, 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 the negative side of uh, technology development in, in our engineering education, and, I mean, from engineering education perspective I think the of view. knowledge mm -hmm. or the education is pretty neutral in a sense. Okay, if you have more, right, you can use for good and you can use for the bad, right? <laughs> so I'm kind of uh, saying, uh, uh, if we are, have the, <coughs> say we want to use for the goodness, and then we can use for that, <laughs> okay? <laughs> of course, uh, I think we still need science technology to save the world, okay, save the earth, okay, but not uh, uh, abuse <laughs> the earth, okay. <laughs> okay. I would like to ask uh, uh, Professor, the comparison between Taiwan and South Korea, it seems like since the financial crisis, yeah. uh, 98, uh, South Korea has advanced more than Taiwan. Yeah. Uh, so my question is, how, do you think it's a matter of uh, uh, systematically it, it, they have done something better, or is it because there has been a critical loss of human talent to China in Taiwan? Uh. I think the South Korea uh, is very successful in the past few years because, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, they, the same song, you know, integrate, in, integrate, you know, all area of product, all research together. Okay, whereas in Taiwan, you know, our foundry, like TSMC, and then we have also, you know, uh, chip design, company, hundreds of them. And then, uh, you know, think, and uh, D-Run also, separate companies, okay. But the South Korea combine them together, okay. But on the other hand, our small and medium company are very competitive because they have to survive by themselves. Whereas in South Korea, there's only one big company, the small and medium-sized company I have a hard time to survive, okay? So if they change the president, which come now, the current one come from Samsung, okay? Maybe the Samsung will not be in a, that a, a event, you know, comfortable position for international competition. And in Taiwan, in the area of that semiconductor, you know, that <coughs> foundry, chip design, and we, are not good in the d run but overall packaging together, I think we are still in that area, still better than South Korea, okay? And our company, all the companies are very, uh, I can say they are work very hard, very innovative, okay? So we are see <laughs> in the future. But, you know, they have this model. Actually, the TSMC, the foundry company actually changed the business model 
okay? Because all the chip design company, they don't have to have their own foundry, okay? But now the Samsung changed a little bit of that kind of culture. And we are discussing, discuss that very serious, you know, how to react to uh, the, now the apparent advantage of South Korea, okay? My question is very simple. You, you manage, um, as a minister, mm -hmm. uh, investments and research, mostly, for the country. Um, what is your perception about the needs, the top needs of engineering education uh, to address the challenges of Taiwan in the region? I've, um, not, only, not only as a country, but in the region uh, vers uh, versus the world. Uh, because you we, have to pick two. Yeah, uh, we have, uh, actually, I don't worry that much for the engineering education. Uh, as you see earlier, there are EI paper rank number nine, okay, and we have a very strong engineering school, engineer, and like the other the medical school, the best student going to like double E or, you know, in, in Taiwan, okay. So now, what I worry is that, uh, you know, how can we get the research result, basic research result, going transfer, you know, the academic achievement become the achievement of money, <laughs> okay, going to the industry. Yeah, that's right, that's a technology transfer. Okay, that's a, maybe the most important issue for Taiwan. Okay, because uh, the engineering, it's, I think the education and the number of students are kind of quite enough, okay? I just wanted to ask uh, a little bit more about this uh, digital schools and the 21st century. Yes. Um, it seems for me that if you have, let's say, um, people at certain age, maybe students and so on, they can go their own, let's say, way and, uh, and study at their own pace and you know, choose different subjects and, you know, work as they, as they like. But uh, it seems that you want to do it also for the, you know, very small children. Yeah. And uh, if you can tell a little bit more, if there is like lessons learned, does it really work? Isn't it that you should have some like stable base that, you know, the people, I mean, the small children still will get the same kind of education and not that, you know, one will study only math and the other one will study only literature and I mean, a little bit about, you know, this new system and, let's say, young children and if there is, like, lessons learned. Mm -hmm. the, the teacher also play a very important role in this system. You know, they monitor their progress. As in, so you have one-to-one -one tutoring, and that's very efficient, very, very good for. So we have experience for the first grade, second grade, and third grade. Uh, only a few schools only. And the result, as I mentioned, is very, very good. You know, like at the second grade, they have the capability of third grade in math. And in terms of Chinese language reading, it's even better. Yeah, because they can read any time, you know, seamless education. You know, very, very, very good. Yeah. So it can be like first grade, second grade, third grade, no problem. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, yeah, thank you. <laughs>